All right, so let's take a look at the instructions here. So our first step is to flip the top base upside down, looks like, and then start installing the three axis channels with the motors that go inside of it. And then obviously we need to plug them in. And there are four of the longer bolts that hold each of the legs. So yeah, this assembly is probably going to be quite easy because everything is pretty much ready to go here. So we got it upside down. We'll just start with on this side here with the Y. Now make sure you have your cables out so you can see them. And you guys can see that there's four threads there on each corner. So on these channels here, they look all to be exactly the same. Well, actually, maybe not, because here we have a Z, so they're not the same. But we're looking for a Y. So let's grab one that says Y. So yeah, it's a good thing we were paying attention, because that maybe would have been not so good. Apparently, it might make a difference of where it goes. But in any case, you guys can see there's four holes here on the front side, and the bolts are going to go through them into the threads here. So I just simply kind of literally slides right in there but before we slide it in we need to go ahead and plug in the motor wire so once we plug it in and now we can insert it so it all kind of sits together now we're going to grab our bolts and i think there's only two kinds the longer kind and the short kind so we're going to use the long ones here and we're going to need four for each corner grab the provided allen wrench and start our bolts they should line up there we go. So yeah, very simple and straightforward. All right, and that's all four. And you can go ahead and snug them up if you want, but I'm gonna wait till I install all of the channels and the other end. That way it all lines up nicely before I, you know, tighten everything because I want it to be all in the position it wants to be before I solidify the whole frame. So yeah, simple as that, guys. Our Y is on, and now we're gonna move to the next one, which is Z. So yeah, very simple process and nothing complicated here and our last one which is the X all right and that is all three of them so for the next part we're going to be installing the upper portion so this is what we got so far well I guess it's the bottom portion since the printer is upside down but yeah it's pretty simple we're just going to lay it into the top and then there's same four bolts and we're going to tighten it too and then we're also going to install that little magnetic thing, which apparently is for the screen holder. So we're going to turn the logo here so we can see it because we're going to line everything up to that. And if we go up, hopefully you guys can see pretty well here. We're going to grab the bottom base and with the logo pointing towards the front. So we're going to turn it upside down and logo towards the front. I'm going to line it up like this. Uh, should sit maybe on the corners here. One of my corners is not sitting right now. So yeah, this is another good reason why you shouldn't probably tighten the other end completely until we get it all together. But yeah, then we got same four bolts on each corner. So yeah, the main thing here to make sure you get right is that the, I guess, part with the tray here goes to the front, just like the logo on the other side down there. So yeah, now we just need to put all the bolts in, four on each corner, 12 total. And by the way, the printer does have nice squishy feet here that it sits on. All right, so if you haven't tightened all your bolts yet, like I haven't, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and tighten every one of them because this is going to, you know, bring everything together and make a solid frame. But actually guys, as I'm tightening this, I'm thinking that maybe it's a better idea to go ahead and flip it around on its feet and then tighten everything because it's not sitting completely straight right now and it could be flexing somewhat to the wrong side. So I'm gonna wait for that. And we also need to, before we flip it around, go ahead and install this little magnetic holder. And there's like a little T-nut. It's pretty simple the way it works. You just unscrew the T-nut. And we're gonna be going on this side and we're simply just gonna slide it down this rail here. And then it should just slide right now, which is basically going to the top. And it's going to go somewhere here, I'm guessing. And we can figure out exactly how high we want it later. But yeah, you're just going to tighten it and it's going to lock it in. It doesn't move anywhere. And then our remote here, or our controller, magnetizes to the holder, just like that. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this thing around. Wow, this thing is quite tall. All right, so we put in our bracket that holds the screen. The next part looks like we're gonna be putting in the arms with the hot end 
So basically our hot end with the brackets that hold it all together. So if you guys look here on each of the axes or the corners, there's a similar bracket here. We just got to figure out which is the front. I'm guessing where the logo is the front. So yeah, it probably goes like this. So the logo pointing to the front, that's how it's going to go. You guys, I don't know if you can see from this angle, but yeah, we're just going to literally stretch it on there just like that. So it all kind of want to twist together because it's all compressed until we put all three of them on but let's grab another one here and it might be easier to go ahead and, and put them on the hot end part first I'm sure we can make it work here then we'll stretch it on this one all right so it's starting to hold itself same thing on our last one stretch it over onto the bracket and there we go guys they're all on so the springs keep them together and that's actually quite a cool unique way of doing it and you guys can see how the delta works each arm controls a movement but what's interesting about that is there's quite a bit of calculating to do because each motor has to move a certain amount to you know move on a flat plane so delta printers are very unique but they got a really huge advantage of being able to move fast and everything is very lightweight here on the hot end itself but yeah that wasn't very hard and that part is good so for the next part what we need to do is we need to connect all these connections from the hot end to the other end here so we got a wire coming down here straight from the top and you guys can see that there's a bunch of wires that match up with the wires that are coming out of the hot end so it's a pretty simple process just match up the colors and connect them together now there are two wires that have black plugs and it look like they're identical but let's see maybe it doesn't matter where they go but let's just plug them in and see what happens and they're not labeled so hopefully that's how they go but the rest match up and plug in no problem and then we have also another plug that's left out and that's for the level so that's our temporary plug there when we level the bed also guys on the back part we have this other main plug that comes out and it simply just goes straight up from there to a socket right under here so a pretty self-explanatory maybe push the wire into the channel there to clean it up that seems to work pretty good all right well we're making good progress let's go ahead and flip the printer this way and this is where we just plugged in this plug this is one of our sides and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be installing the extruder assembly with the bracket and everything and it okay so there's two slots that it actually has some hooks that it bites into or goes into like this and then it kind of hangs off of there and then there's two bolts that we're going to put in there so we're using the smaller bolts that were included we'll go ahead and snug them up all right that was pretty simple now we do have two wires coming out from the top and one of them's to the motor and the other one's to the filament detector you guys probably can't see it yeah there's a little pass through here we can go to the motor plug that in so the motor is the larger one and the filament detector is the smaller one and that's going to plug into it and just like that so you guys probably can't see that but now it looks like i did make a mistake because this tube here coming from the top let's see if i can try this thing well you guys can see that little tube i think it's supposed to go right into the filament detector but i didn't put it in there when i was putting on the bracket so yeah i'll probably have to loosen that again let's see if we can pop it in there there we go so it has to go in inside the filament detector the little ptfe tubing and now we can tighten it back up there we go and so the way our filament feeds is from the top here down through the ptfe tubing into the detector and then it goes into the extruder from there and then out of the extruder into the hot end and while we're over here we can go ahead and connect the ptfe tubing from the hot end into the extruder i'm gonna go ahead and lower this down a bit so yeah we're just gonna simply insert it into the coupler there on the bottom and just like that and that should be good right there now before we continue to the next step we need to put a little wedge in here in the coupler so it doesn't open and close easily because it moves around and so what we're looking for is probably in here let's go ahead and open this thing up but what we're looking for are these little clips here so they give you quite a few extra ones they appear to be all pretty much the same they are 3d printed which is kind of cool so yeah we're just gonna grab one and insert it here into the coupler a little bit tight fit but it does go and yeah now it's super solid nothing moves but yeah you definitely want to install this little clip in here and by the way our hot end already has the clip so we're good there so yeah one thing i do want to do while i'm over here is zip tie these two together here the ptfe tubing and the wiring i feel like that'll clean it up a little nicer we're just going to use these provided zip ties to secure it all last thing we want is a bunch of messy wires everywhere and plus it'll kind of keep it away from the arms as it goes up all right i think that's pretty good there go ahead and cut the extra off and yeah, that's much nicer 
All right guys, so for the last part, we're gonna be putting our spool holder together. So it's pretty simple. We just need to connect these two parts together first. So there's two bolts that you're gonna go through there. And there we have the spool holder. So the spool holder is gonna go on top of the printer like this. So we're still looking at the back here. Well, I guess one of the sides, but this is the inlet here for the filament that goes down into the extruder here. So basically there's two little threads here on top and that's where we're gonna connect the spool holder. Again, we're using small bolts. And that's it, our spool holder is on. So it's not super stable up here, but I'm sure it's gonna be fine. And if we flip the printer back to the front, you guys can see that the spool holder actually points straight to it. So yeah, this thing is very tall. I can't even fit it all in the camera here. Let's go to the bottom. And I think we're pretty much finished with the assembly. 